Here's a question for you to kick things off today. The plan for this save all along had been, as soon as we get to the point where deep in rangers can't progress any further up the pyramid on their own, I would take over and that would become my new Twitch save when I return to Twitch in about four weeks' time. Here's my question. My normal non-lethal legend save is getting to what could be considered to be a natural ending point. I could take on another manager in that save, or we could do this series on YouTube within the next couple of weeks rather than waiting a month for it to be on Twitch and do something else on Twitch when I come back. So my question to you is, what would you, where would you rather see Kev taking over his manager of Deep in Rangers on the Sugar Daddy? Is that something you'd be interested in seeing as my probably realistically last YouTube save for FM17 before we start preparing for FM18? Or would you rather we did something more on the lines of the Milan mission like we did last year, something completely different from what we've done before outside of England, and save this as something a little bit different for over on Twitch? Let me know down in the comments, and today's an interesting one. Hello and welcome to part seven of non to Legend, The Sugar Daddy. I'm Kev, and... I'm deliberately not starting things up on the Deep in Rangers screen because for the first time since they were taken over by a handsome billionaire so many years ago, Deep in Rangers have not been promoted this season. Deep in Rangers have a new manager and you will not guess who he is, unless it's on this screen somewhere. No, you won't guess who he is. And yeah, it's looking a little bit like... We might only be a season or two away from old Kev having to step in. Hence the question I asked in the intro. So let's not keep you in suspense any longer. Let's flick over to the Deep in Ranger screen. And we can see that, I don't know which is bigger news. They finished 12th in League One. And Steve McLaren is the manager. We'll deal with the... <laughs> we've got to address this Steve McLaren issue first. So Steve McLaren, aged 62 is the new manager of Deeping Rangers, having been appointed on the 17th of January. He was sacked by Derby after six years at Derby. It, was he sacked? Yeah, he was sacked by Derby about a year ago. He'd been out of football for a year, moved into Deeping Rangers, might have even moved into my house. Who, who knows? I don't see him at the moment. And finished 12th. Way to go, Steve. This is a team that has lost about three games in nearly a decade so good work there but i hear you cry why on earth it's we're deeping appointing a new manager surely they didn't sack scott porter just because we weren't getting a seventh consecutive promotion well no they didn't sack scott porter he did the unthinkable and after six years and 173 days six league wins six cup wins six promotions he just quit I went to manage somebody else. And it's not as if, oh, well, Chelsea came in for him. What was he going to do? He quit to go and manage Preston. And then got him relegated. I think. It's 22nd relegated. Yeah. So, after six and a half years of just absolute glory and domination, the moment things started to get a little bit tough for him, he jumped ship. To a team who, uh, I mean, when he came in, he came in, in Jan 1st of January, so they were 22nd. He gave them a little bit of a blip, a little bit of a resurgence for three games, and they finished exactly where they were when he came in. So he had half a season just to move Preston one place up. Didn't manage it. I'm surprised they haven't sacked him. I'm really, really disappointed with him. He was a hero in my eyes, and now... You just don't do that. Deep in Rangers icon, Scott Porter. We need to take his icon status away. Oh, he doesn't. Have, why is this? He's not got a biography on there, but he does have a biography on here. That's weird. But yeah, so Scott Porter's moved on. Um, I'm not sure where Deep in were when he left. Let's see if that's the re <laughs> See if it's all Steve McLaren's fault. So if we have a look at the league table. Oh, goodness me. Scotty P, what did you do? So Deeping had the traditional good start to the season and it was they hit a rough patch. We'll have a look at the fixtures in a minute. They hit a rough patch in October, plummeted down the league a little bit and Porter left after that game. A nil-nil draw with Cambridge. 
I mean, to be fair to McLaren, he's brought them back up the league a little bit. You could argue Deepin were in free fall. Perhaps Scott Porter found his limit. I really hope, for my sake, Deepin Rangers didn't find their limit. So, good start to the season. Well, OK, good first two games after all that momentum that carried them this far. But then they had a long run, even as early as August, a long run of six or seven games in all competitions without a win. A little bit of a resurgence, but then four straight defeats. Um, another win, in the, just one win in the league, but progress in the FA Cup and the Checker Trade, Mickey Mouse Nonsense Cup. And then another spell of, what's that, seven or eight games without a league win. Did manage to get a win against Plymouth. And another league win against Sheffield United. So the comeback was on and he did two more games, two draws. So he was actually on a four-match unbeaten run in the league. Things looked like they might be turning around, but then he left. McLaren came in about here. And again, he had a little bit of a bounce initially the way Porter did at Preston. But then that run into the season is just miserable. Look at the state of that. So, deep in Rangers find themselves in the year 2023 not moving leagues for the first time since the save began. So we start to bring our rules of the save into play. If they don't get promoted next season, I'm taking over the season after. So if they're if the 2024-25 season starts anywhere other than the championship, I step in and we see what we can do. It might be, looking at the way they were in free fall at the end of the season, that I could well be stepping into a League 2 team, which would be a bit of a problem. But let's try and just try and work out where it's all been going wrong. So if we look at the transfers again for what is this, the fifth or sixth season in a row now? Just no players coming in. One player signed. Stefan O'Connor, 26 year old centre back. Mini wages. So they're not bringing in the players on the big money anymore. And he only played seven games all year. So he wasn't a player who was signed to be in the first team. He's the only player they were able to bring in. But look at all these players who left. Ryan Loft had been around for a long time, scored a decent number of goals had been the main striker in the League 2 promotion season. He moved on to Chester in the Vanarama National, and he's earning not very much money. It's, what I mean. it's a lot for Chester, I guess. Brian Lenehan, he was a club legend who had been around for a long, long time, ends up League 1, Milton Keynes Dons. Um, any more big names that we should know on here? Not really. These are all youngsters that have gone out on loan, I think. So the one reassuring thing for me is I'm starting to prepare to take over as manager is it's the first season where there hasn't been a big young player sold by the club. The young players are starting to go out on loan. So the, it, their thinking seems to be shifting more towards developing these players, getting them some experience in other clubs before bringing them back into Deeping Rangers. And I think it looks like there is a significant shift Certainly looking at transfer policy with players coming in over the last three or four years, away from what realistically was just one silly summer, towards, right, we now need to try and become self-sufficient. We've got a good youth system. It's not as good as it was seven seasons ago because it will have declined in time. And we'll get to have a proper look at that when I take over as manager. But at least we're not flogging the good kids. And it's a shame that some of the better players have had to move on, but presumably that's for financial reasons. They need to get themselves out of failing financial fair play because for as long as they're failing financial fair play, they're not able to really mix it up in the transfer market at all. And unfortunately, um, when you've... I mean, Steve McLaren's not a lot of money, but we've looked at Nathaniel Chalabar before and unbelievably he signed a new contract with the club on £80,000 a week again. Has he? Or I mean, he couldn't have had a contract that was like eight years long when he first signed. So despite after that season not spending silly money on players anymore, they've kept giving him new contracts on £80,000 a week and he's single-handedly destroying this football club. Dara Lenehan, £32,500 a week for a League One club who can't afford to sign players. We looked at this last season, I think, but if we sort this by contract and just have a look to see how much money the players in the squad are actually earning. It's so twisted towards the top three or four players. Chalabar on 80,000. Zeki Friars, who, I mean, he plays half the games maybe, and he's rubbish. First order of business, just bend these players off. Marcus Bettinelli, who, okay, he's played a lot of games, but still. Connor, oh, Connor, Connor McAllenies managed to stick around, but... Nowhere near the player he was at this level, obviously. He's kind of hit his limit, maybe. So, 
and you get much beyond that and it's a it's a sorry state of affairs the one silver lining is the fact that there are all these youngsters who are all valued around about half a million pounds who okay so he's not a youngster he's someone we've signed from stoke oh still a decent signing so we've got a decent striker um switch back to my custom view and we don't have value on there but we can sort it by age so there's no real young teenagers in there but we have got a 21 year old centre back product of our youth team we've managed to keep hold of him this is promising stuff so there's something to work with as and when we move into position um, the other thing we need to have a look at is the cup runs um, which I completely forgot to look at last time but I think we kind of saw it on there check a trade trophy um, got as far as the North second round. Aaron Cool scored a lot of goals this season. His name seems to be all over this. Only one goal in the league. And to, do I just notice his name because he's one of the few players who I know from previous saves of my own? Because his name seemed to be all over there, but it's there that did he really score his three goals that close together? So I just notice him when I'm scrolling. He really did. Bless him. And then knocked out in the FA Cup third round by Fleetwood. I mean, it's not been a very good season there at all, has it? If we have a look at the history of the club, still on a massive, massive upward trajectory, but that's just going to level out a little bit there. And the the longer this goes on, the more the club are going to start to forget where they came from a little bit. And the expectation is going to be, oh, hang on about. If you're, look, if you're looking like you might be relegated from League One, fired. Whereas before, it was, well, we're in Tier 9. Who cares? Let's do what we can. Um, can we see attendances on here? I don't think we can, can we? But if we go into records, we can see what the average attendance has been this season. Not really improved at all. So there's been a steady increase, but it's not increasing fast enough to support the kind of wages this club are paying. Um, and in fact, it's a slight drop on the season before. So as my club, Peterborough United, have found in real life, you get more fans a division below in an exciting promotion chasing season than you get at the next level up if you're not winning the league constantly so worried a little bit that support may be starting to level out some of the big players are going to need to move on I mean the likes of Gary Medine, Medine he's retired he's become a manager now but he was such an important player for so long losing him is a big loss and he's and it's the kind of player that we're not able to replace because presumably of the transfer embargo I can't believe it's manager choice or chairman choice that the club aren't going out and investing money in players hot youngster is ian swift 15 years old left winger and just before we go we'll check in on those young players who have moved on in the earlier seasons just to get an idea of how their careers are progressing so uh, james wallace he's at west wow hold your horses he's valued at nearly 10 million pounds He's at West Brom. He's had a full season in the Premier League. Deep in Rangers produced a £10 million player. And, I mean, imagine just be, imagine if there's a couple more of them in that youth team. It could solve what is presumably financial issues at the club now. Bobby Windrum, £3 million. He's at Wigan in the Championship after a full season. This is the calibre of player this youth system has produced in the past. It's just whether it's still doing it or not all these years on. So the next year... Ryan Genders, only valued at 250000 still, but has played half a season for Cardiff in the Championship. So that's a, it's a player we'd love to bring in. And certainly one of my first things that I'd try and do as, a, as an incoming manager would be to try and bring in some of these players. Obviously, we're not going to get James Wallace for 10 million quid, although that's got to be a career goal. But someone like, again, he's had a full season in the Championship now, which is great for him, hard for us to sign him. Lee Winter has, I mean, he's a player who could come into Deeping on loan now. He's played, he's been in our division for the last two seasons. Why is he not coming back home on loan rather than going to Leighton Orient and Chesterfield? There seems to just be some really strange decisions being made by Digital Kev. Robotic Kev, it's Robotic Kev. Off of Twitch, long-time Twitch stream followers will know all about Robotic Kev. Oliver Buckle looks played a full season in the Championship after leaving us for quite a lot of money. Ryan Williams. I mean, they're all reaching a decent level. Imagine if we'd have kept these these players together. It, it really is tempting to... I wouldn't do it on YouTube, but just as a little offline thing, 
play it with myself as manager from the start just to see if if this is the kind of caliber of players we can bring through see how how easy it is to keep hold of some some of them and just do a like a youth academy challenge with these players i might see if i can dig out the original database and i must have it and make it available for you lot so rather than me doing it because realistically i'm not gonna play 10 seasons of this but perhaps one of you could and let me know how you get on whether you managed to keep the young players but that's interesting i I will now reveal that I expected them to make it all the way to the Premier League without starting to stutter. The stuttering has begun and the big question for the comments today is are we going to get promoted next year or are we one season away from old Kev becoming manager of his hometown club, the Ping Rangers? If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you pop a like on there for me. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more and thank you very much for watching.